Okay, well, Akila, thank you very much. Am I audible now? Um, well, it's been a real treat to watch yes. all those tributes. Um, I'm not sure my children or wife would uh, recognize the person who's being described. Um, so maybe you'll send me those videotapes so I can play them every now and then, maybe every every evening at the dinner table to convince them there are some people around uh, who have good things to say about me. And I want to thank the, the, the Global Health Catalyst for putting this all together, um, uh, for according me this honor, which uh, I'm happy to accept. Uh, and I'd like to speak out especially to uh, to Will Negra and Steve Avery, who put this together, uh, to some of my friends, uh, including Bill Nelson and, uh, and others who um, I'm particularly happy to hear from. Uh, thank, thanks very much to Satish for putting together that remarkable review of what's been happening at the Center for Global Health at the NCI. Uh, clearly, you moved beyond uh, aspirations by quite a quite a quite a, a yard or two and uh, I look forward to reading some of your latest reports and seeing the the um, the article that you and, and Ned just published in JAMA um, and I want to thank those of you who are sticking with this uh, uh, moment of adulation here that may not be quite as well deserved as it ought to be uh, and give me a chance to say just a couple of things about uh, global health and what's on my mind at the moment. Um, my own interest in global health date back a long way, over 50 years, to a time when I was a medical student uh, serving in a missionary hospital in Uttar Pradesh in North India. And um, although for a time my, uh, my concentration was focused uh, instead on, on uh, microbiology and, and uh, cancer viruses, uh, my, this residual interest in global health that was sparked by my medical ex experience uh, was uh, further engaged when I was NIH director and became interested in using malaria as a playing field for trying to improve uh, the approach that scientists could make to uh, ongoing disease in, in the poorer parts of the world. And uh, that allowed me to travel to Africa and meet with people from many countries who were focused on new approaches that science could take to malaria. We founded an organization that just celebrated its 20th anniversary uh, in Dakar, uh, an organization called the Mul Multilateral Initiative on Malaria that's prospered during this period when malaria has been coming under much better control. Uh, as, you've, um, as you've heard uh, uh, largely from Satish, um, my interest in global health was accelerated by my time at the National Cancer Institute uh, when I was able to perceive from that post uh, the need to uh, incorporate uh, uh, considerations about uh, cancer in low and middle income countries into our nation's efforts in cancer research to try to promote cancer prevention by using available tools such as the uh, human papillomavirus vaccine um, and in, in, in efforts to uh, reduce uh, cancer rates. Uh, and uh, to bring new therapies uh, into uh, cancer care, which are not uh, um, unreachable, even in the, some of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, and now, of course, my interest in global health has been further, further uh, stimulated by a couple of things, including most obviously the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but also by a, a post that I'm gonna mention to you in a moment. Let me just say a word, and I know the hour is late, but let's say a couple of things about, three things about global health that are on my mind at the moment, because I think they're important. The first is confronting uh, the global dimensions of, of COVID-19, not simply focused on keeping Americans safe from the virus, but thinking about uh, uh, how important it is to have the entire world uh, protected. That includes getting everybody immunized against SARS-CoV-2. That at the moment is a more important endeavor in my view than, than getting booster shots into everybody who's potentially uh, vulnerable. Um, uh, and the second part of this is getting um, countries sufficiently equipped with genomic technologies to be able to survey their populations for the appearance of viral variants. And that's an act that we, that we carry out in self-interest as well, because the real, crisis here that we face over the next year or two is the appearance of variants that elude the protection afforded by current vaccines. The second thing that, that I've been 
thinking about a lot in the last uh, few years is efforts to not only promote global health uh, as, a, as a way of confronting cancer in other countries, but to think about the principles of global health and rectifying inequities on, in oncology that exist in our own cities, such as New York, where I currently live. Um, and uh, with that in mind, uh, we have started at the, at the New York Genome Center, where I work part-time, an uh, initiative called Polyethnic 1000, which is designed to bring the fruits of, uh, of modern genetics to the study of uh, the genetic risk factors in cancer and the patterns of mutations that are found uh, in uh, people of different ancestries. Uh, so we've been creating a, a consortium of roughly 20 institutions in New York, especially those that see uh, patients who are, who are historically underserved and understudied uh, to try to bring modern science into uh, the practice of oncology in New York, but in ways that uh, are uh, clearly um, exportable to poorer countries where the research efforts are less well supported. The third thing that is on my mind at the moment uh, are efforts that uh, have been uh, encouraged by an invitation I received from the Director General of the World Health Organization to chair his new Science Council, which is designed to advise him about new technologies that are important in confronting disease but uh, may not be uh, available in many countries. And our council has uh, initiated a study uh, as its first study of the importance of, uh, of uh, using genomics, a very broad technology that's now increasingly used uh, in the advanced countries to study uh, cancer and infectious disease and other things to make those technologies available in poor countries. We're currently conducting workshops that are open to all. Uh, the next one is on November 18th. There'll be a third on December 2nd. Uh, you can see these advertised on the WHO website, and I invite you to have a look at what we're trying to do, and that will, should have effects uh, on, most immediately on the COVID pandemic, but also on approaches to oncology in poor countries, because increasingly, the modern practice of oncology does demand access to this technology we call genomics. Underlying all these concerns, however, is a concern, much more general concern about uh, the way uh, humanity is approaching uh, many of the things that confront it from climate change to medicine and to uh, energy use. And that has to do with whether we focus on our selfish concerns about uh, getting through the next few days or years on our own uh, with the need to have a, a greater concern about uh, the human community and the long-term future that we uh, of, of the earth that we leave to uh, our children and grandchildren. Uh, I'm worried about uh, people who resist vaccination because they think vaccination may hurt them without recognizing that if they don't get vaccinated, they imperil the entire community because they allow the virus to consider continue to roam through our populations. Uh, I'm uh, concerned about uh, uh, the reluctance to share new technologies and medicines with all the populate all populations because of uh, the profitability of these uh, of these uh, uh, new opportunities and the increased difficulty of trying to administer and use those technologies uh, in in poor countries. So I take uh, comfort in the context of my, that concern about uh, our failure to act as a community and instead to act out of self-interest with organizations like the Global Health Catalyst that are reinforcing the principles of global health, which at its basis is a humanitarian concern that uh, reflects well on humankind. And I congratulate all of you who put this uh, effort together and are continuing to hold up the flag for uh, the pursuit of, of health of all people on this planet. Thank you very much.